Hi folks, Chuck McCown here, Ben McCown on the tools. We're doing the uh, Vermeer uh, speed conversion kit changeover right now. And so we're going to show you what it takes. It's very simple. It's very easy. The first thing you got to do, you get your saw, your MTR 16, is you need to take this side off as well as the uh, little presser foot thing because you've got to get access to the same area that you would if you were changing a blade. And then this uh, adapter, this hub adapter has to come off and Ben's going to do that right now. And you notice he switched sockets there. For some reason, this one had smaller bulkheads on some of those bolts. And that hub adapter comes off. And you can change these hub adapters. That one's for a Vermeer blade. Um, if we, if you do the speed conversion kit and you buy the uh, the high torque motor upgrade kit, you can't. You, it will require you to buy our um, ditch switch compatible blades because the hub is different. So now he's taking he's taking the motor out. You'll reuse your motor unless you're going high torque. That'll save you about five grand, but at the expense of 25% uh, of your speed. The high torque motor is the same as the used in a ditch which MT16 and uh, contrary to our what we thought um, it, it goes quite a bit faster it's the difference between 15 and 20 feet per minute by going with that high torque motor but again it's cheaper to just reuse your motor that's what we're doing on this one and it's easy to upgrade to the high torque motor later it takes just a motor mount uh, assembly, which uh, we will provide you with the motor as long as you turn give us the old one back because it can be reused for future customers that don't want to upgrade. Going around smacking it from the other side, you get enough clearance to uh, to get a uh, pry bar in there. And unless you're taking the motor upgrade, don't even unhook the hoses from this motor. Just leave them hooked up. We're going to use these hoses. We're just going to extend them just a little bit up here on the other end of them. There it is. Now, we're going to disconnect these back hoses for this small cylinder in the back. Those will get reused. Some of these MTR-16s have another cylinder. Um, so they have two sets of these small hoses. Well, they all have this cylinder up front, which is the lift cylinder, which lifts the cylinder off of the off the ground. And we'll be reusing that cylinder and its hoses. This one, we will not be reusing the cylinder, but we'll be reusing these hoses to lift the blade up and down. So, all right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the cylinder out. And it's called a trunnion cylinder. You're going to reuse all these bolts. And you're going to be reusing those uh, silvery, uh, the silvery thing in the middle is the trunnion cylinder bearing. He's taking the ears off of these pins. These pins will be reused. You got a, you got a bolt on this side. Trunnion cylinder. Whoa. <laughs> We had a little bit of a of an event here. All right, so he's getting that that cylinder out, and that's it, man. That's all there is to removing your old saw, saw housing. You can see um, by himself, and he had a lot of problems. Whoops. Okay, he had a lot of problems with that old uh, crack seal rubber in there, but we're only into this 11 minutes so far, single-handedly. This is kind of, I guess, the point the point we're trying to make. That one person can do this this uh, swap out really quickly. What are you getting? All right, have a pallet ready because this thing's um, especially with those other parts missing. Um, it's not it's it's center of gravity is shifted off to the side a little bit, and it wants to uh, easily fall over. And this would definitely give you a sore toe if it should fall on it. All right, folks. Next step here is to attach the arms. Ben is removing the arms from the pain stand here. Um, as you can see, one person can can manage this job. To date, Ben and I have built 100% of these things. Ben paints them, 
I do a lot of the welding. Ben makes the arms. I, I make the saw. So if you if you find problems with it, you'll know who to blame. We're just about ready to transfer this whole project over to our regular staff of welders. And so, see how easy this goes on? And it's just simple. It's just super simple to do. It would be easier with two people, but I have this, this duty of holding this camera real super steady. So I'm going to see how Ben does on his own here. I think he'll probably do just fine. Now, the trunnion bearing gets installed next. Need some help or they stick it in one side and then the other. Making sure that the hydraulic hoses go this way and not the other way. Trunnion bearings go on next. They've got their little wear washers on the... Do they have zerks on them? Zerks. Oh, zerks on the end, so you don't have to worry about clocking them where the zerk is up or something like that. So that goes on really super easy. Probably one of the easiest parts of this thing. Opposite trunnion bearing. Same lift cylinder, same lever. And there, that's all there is. That's the arm, complete. One man, install the arm, just a few minutes. With two people, it'd go a lot faster. But you can see it's really not a big, a big deal. Um, put a few more bolts in and, you know, we're done. Yeah, all right, here's Ben bringing over the actual saw itself. Gonna mate it up with the arm. Then it just slips right in that little pocket there. It's got a brass bushing in it. Big old steel pin that goes in there. What's he going to do? Back up? Looks like he's going to back her up a little bit. Well, I was driving the forklift forward for him. Well, that's easy. I think Ben's done this before. You see how easy that is? Still one man. It's still a one man operation here. I've And then, uh, as you'll see the next step, put the motor in, hook up the lines, and we're done, baby. Uh, of course, you'll need to put mount your, your saw blade and put the door on the other side. Um, but this is really, really a simple conversion. So now, the next step, hoses and motor. All right, we already put the hoses, those two hoses, on the cylinder. Uh, obviously, you get them backwards, your lever's going to work different than what you want. That's no big deal. Now, you may resist, you may have an impulse to say, oh, these motor hoses will reach. And yes, in fact, they will reach until you slide it all the way over and then they will be tighter than a rubber band. So we've got your hose extenders, three hose extenders that you'll need to to take them off up by the tractor. Now Ben, would you point out the hard ox wear parts on this thing? So it has these slider brackets back here and this foot is the hard ox. The skid plate and, yeah. and, and in there where that motor plate goes up and down, the parts that it rubs on on side to side, you can't really see them. Those are AR plate, and uh, 
we'll see how that works because you know that the original one and then in the transition uh, this is a six inch cam lock transition going on here we haven't got it painted yet got a replaceable AR plate that's going to go on the inside of that and you can just because it's going to get it gets all of its wear right on this side of the transition and and it'll wear that thing out but we've got a replaceable AR plate you can just every now and then look down that when you take the hose off uh, it's bolted in so when the bolt head gets worn off <laughs> that's probably a good sign that you need a new plate in there Ben's uh, taking his hoses loose and he's going to put his extension hoses on there. We'll join him here in a little bit. All right, Ben's just finishing up this hose extension. There's three of them here. Um, no matter where you do them, they're going to leak a little bit, a little bit messy. So if you're going to try this in the field, um, you want to make sure you got some pig mats and stuff to not make a hazardous waste area on the job site. But... Um, these hoses will get you full range of motion of the mechanism. All right, hose extension is complete. Install the motor. Now the same number of bolts um, that came out, I think some of the bolts are different. And so we have two less, two less or four less? Four less. Guaranteed to be much faster and simpler than anything you'd ever buy from Ikea. And you won't have parts left over. And it won't break on you part way through. Four there. Got it. Go. The bolts to hold the cover on. Oh, those Got same bolts, bolts you took off before? Yep. So there you have it, folks. I am not convinced at all you need all those bolts. Ditch Witch doesn't have that many bolts. And it's a much higher torque motor. It's almost twice the torque. I would say feel free to leave those last two out if you, really, if you don't feel like it. So that's pretty much it, folks. Um, obviously, we've got to put this, this hub back on. And with the Vermeer stock motor, like we've done today, Vermeer blades are our blades, I should say. We hope you're using our blades. Go right on there, the MTR uh, 16 blades. If you should later uh, want to go with the high torque motor, you uh, would need to switch to the MT-16 blades. Put the blade on, slap the side on. Obviously, we've got to finish and, and paint the transition and screw the cam lock on it. We really are excited about this idea of putting that uh, chunk of armor plate down inside that transition that's replaceable. So that thing, hopefully, will never wear out on you. We're learning a lot how the dirt comes out of these things. There you have it, start to finish. After editing, we'll be in this thing for probably about three minutes and 48 seconds, right, Ben? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll use that 2X or 4X button on the editor. So that's it, folks, from McCann Technology. This is the MTS-16, which stands for McCown Technology Saw. Speed conversion kit for the Vermeer RTX 550 that originally had the MTR 16 saw on it. So I wish you speedy cutting.